Uh, I have uh, defense expert Major Mohammad Shah uh, with us. First, um, you know, my very first question uh, to you, sir. We also have uh, former Ambassador uh, Banju Seth with us. You know, Major Mohammad Shah. First of all, help us understand, sir. You know, as someone who has been associated erstwhile with the army, who understands these defense matters much more than any of us do. Uh, what does this mean when we have the Russian forces so close to Kiev? Is it safe to conclude that Ukraine could fall? any time soon or are you sensing that this war could drag on further? Do you think that there has been some sort of miscalculation on Putin's side as well? It's been what 18 to 20 days since the war started and the stalemate continues. Uh, Minakshi, I will uh, give you a reply in a very simple word so that everyone understands. A person who is not connected with the military or who does not understand tactics also would be able to understand this. You know, there was a visit. I'll tell you of a very senior ambassador visiting our formation once. And when the ambassador was coming, so we were all ready to uh, welcome the ambassador in the VIP room. So there were a lot of drills, rehearsals set. We would open the door and close the door. Okay, the door is opening and closing. And it was, of course, it was an ambassador. Manju said, of course, it was some other ambassador. And uh, so now by, the, by doing these drills, what happened was ultimately we ended up ruining the door handle. So so when the VIP actually came, the, the door handle wasn't working. Similarly, when you think too much, when you are standing on top of a diving board for way too long, waiting to jump in the swimming pool, what happens? You develop a fear there, but then you jump, and whether you're prepared or not is a different thing. Now, that is exactly the same mistake which Russia has done. President Putin had been planning this for a very, very long time. Very, very long time, no doubt. But now, I would, if in my terms, if you have to ask me, I would call it poor execution. Why? Because you have sent a 64-kilometer-long convoy inside, uh, inside an enemy territory, all right, fine. But now who will provide them? Adam, logistics, fuel, supply. They, it's a lot of factors to be considered apart from ammunition and weapon itself. I'll under, give you I'll give a, under very simple ex example. Rajji, you are planning to go on a tour to a foreign country, a friendly country. So what will you do? You will plan it out. You will map. You will take a map. You will plan an itinerary. Accommodation, lodging, fooding, you will budget it out. You make a plan, right? That is when you're going to a friendly country. Still, you'll have some issues. Here, the soldiers are going to an enemy country for invasion, for an attack. When our brave hearts went for a surgical strike, they had time. They had time. Okay, just for time, you have to execute the operation and then fall back. There was a proper time frame. Here, when you actually go and you are now. You don't know where you are going. You are following your commander, all right? There is a navigation. There is a full tactics. There is intelligence network. There is a proper tactics to be used. A lot of people would, may, not, they may, may not agree with me, but the actual thing that Rus does not, Russia does not want to capture Kiev at the end of, it, at, at, at the, end of the day. They might, okay. They, uh, they, that could be one way of looking at it is, one way of looking at it is that you have gone in so far, you cannot move forward, you cannot move behind, you are stuck. So now what would you do? You would end up getting frustrated. You will fire here, there, health of scatter. Secondly, when there are civilians in that country, they have all got weapons. They are armed. They are also posing a threat to you. So that is the time when they open uh, fire on the civilians. But that gives them no right again. So many children have lost their lives. So many children have become orphans. So many young girls have become widows. So many mothers have lost their sons. So many fathers have lost their sons. So many mm. sons have lost their brothers. But at the end of the day, you know, that's what war does. It's the politicians who come and shake hands. It is ridiculous. It is most, it is, so certainly, as you rightly brought up, I certainly see it as a gross miscalculation from President Putin's part as well, Minakshi. Hmm. And it looks like there's been a miscalculation on Putin's side as well. Uh, Major said, uh, it is uh, a problem, miscalculation that has taken place. Major Mohammad Shah, we have more news coming in, sir. Uh, we're getting to know that EU has now come to the aid of Ukraine. We're getting to know uh, that EU is going to be providing electricity uh, to Ukraine. Um, they have synchronized the European grid um, with, um, the U with, with the one in Ukraine. And they are trying to provide, of course, uh, electricity uh, to the beleaguered citizens there in Ukraine. Uh, 
far as NATO, far as EU is concerned, it's clear. They can provide electricity, they can provide humanitarian aid, they are even providing some arms and ammunition, so is the United States of America, but they're not going to give troops on ground. End of the day for Zelensky also, he knows it's sort of a lost battle. Um, given the scenario where it doesn't look like any party is going to emerge as victorious, would you like to take the former diplomat's point forward and suggest some solutions, some way in which you think each party can take a step back and we can all move forward? I think Ambassador uh, Manju said explained in a very, very clear, crystal clear way, and I don't see, think anyone else could have explained in another fine manner at the way she had explained. Now, taking that further, I would say, you know, Minakshi, it yeah. is very easy to, okay, to out, out of uh, haste, though you have been planning at one fine day, the very, very wrong time to actually when the world economy is down, the world is suffering from Corona, the, the humanity is suffering, going and invading into a country, yes. He was provoked. I will not deny that at, at one bit at all. He was provoked, no doubt. But that is no justification. That is no reason to go ahead and, in, and invade a country. It's like, you know, you and I are having an argument and I am armed with a 9mm pistol. So if you do not listen to me, I'll take out my 9mm pistol, you know, unarmed, and I will shoot you. No, it gives no one that right. So now, what is the way forward? As Ambassador rightly said, the way forward is only peace. And when both the countries realize, when both the presidents realize, they stop fighting for their pride, for their self-pride. You know, they are, what has Ukraine been doing? Ukraine was under threat for a long time. But what has Ukraine been doing? As you said, they, the EU has come in its aid that they will supply electricity and such things, energy, all right. But NATO would not put their foot on, feet on the ground. Yeah. What has Ukraine done? Ukraine, they formed a triangle. Lithuania, Poland, Ukraine. And Ukraine was dependent on that triangle. Ukraine was dependent on the EU. Ukraine was dependent on NATO. Ukraine was dependent on the West. India was also under threat. What did India do? India strengthened its borders. India went ahead and went and, and got the uh, the S-400 from Russia, despite the fact that Turkey had just suffered some sanctions under the, uh, the, the Americans have a right to put a sanction if they find countering uh, uh, America's adversary. Right. But so today, America needs India more than India needs America. And India had imposed sanctions on us also mm -hmm. for vaccination, of, of, uh, of, okay. import of, of COVID vaccination. But the day we we administered 1 million uh, vaccinations on one day. Whether you call it coincidence or what, I don't know. But that day, America opened, uh, they, 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 they turned it around. Uh, Major General Shah, help us understand really what does this development mean? It's a, it's a big development, the fact that Russia has now finally used hypersonic missiles in Russia. It's a big claim as well that they have destroyed the arms and ammunition which Ukraine was storing uh, in the western part of the country. Uh, I mean, actually, a few uh, things. You know, a uh, mm -hmm. steel plant has been destroyed in Mariupol just some time back. And that is, again, devastating. They, they, they're destroying steel plant. Now, one of the uh, Ukraine MPs also, he has claimed that women who are above 60, they are being raped and they are being hanged. I mean, these kind of statements are actually really, really alarming. They are also, uh, further statements, there is a psychological warf warf warfare going on. There's information warfare going on. There's cyber warfare, of course, which was always, always there. There was a video of President Zelensky also coming forward, which was a very brief file. It was put up on social media, where he's asking, telling his countrymen to surrender. But immediately the video was taken off, thankfully. And, you know, wherever, whatever, the peace must prevail in any form. I mean, it is, it is really rather painful when you are seeing women, children buying the brunt of it. As soldiers, I have gone be in the front. My ancestors have fought in the First World War. My ancestors fought in the Second World War. My father fought in the 1971 indo pak War. I have seen insurgency in Jammu Kashmir and Northeast. And one simple, one simple principle which we all have always followed is if an insurgent escaped from your captivity, let him escape. Don't get a single soldier as a casualty. You, none of your soldiers should be shot. But here on the way, this information warfare, this psychological warfare going on at the same time, I would say there have been four major generals of the Russian army who have been shot up. Who have, uh, who have been martyred, who have been killed. And that's not a propaganda. Russian army has accepted that. And it has come from Russian army as well. So when, the, when a major general gets shot up, you can imagine the morale of the troops. It really goes down. And yes, there were documents, there were maps, which were caught by the Ukrainian army where they had made a 15-day plan. So it's, it's like an elephant and an ant fighting. The ant stands no chance fighting with an elephant because it's got no but size. Ukraine but hasn't capitulated yet. Uh, you know, you can give the analogy of an elephant and an ant, uh, and an ant apology. The war getting dragged on is not in anyone's, uh, you know, favor, especially it doesn't work for India at all because 
we would like the attention on China, isn't it, Major Mohammed Shah? Uh, the focus, very unfortunately, has shifted from China's belligerence to Russia, and that's not something which India would have wanted at all. Right now, uh, you know, we had Putin and Xi whole talks. U.S. is worried that China may go out and outrightly support Russia, perhaps even provide arms and ammunition to Russia. But it doesn't work for India as well, because the last thing we want is China and Russia once again uh, to become these sort of iron brothers and form this Russia-China-Pakistan axis. It's a very scary scenario for India as well. Uh, Minashi, you are right. But, you know, coming back to my previous point, I wish you had heard me out completely. I have, okay. uh, what I meant Apologies, was please, I'm, please finish. No, it's okay. And, and elephant are ant fighting, but ant has no chance. But if the ant enters the elephant's trunk, it can create havoc for the elephant. So okay. I was giving that analogy to explain that part. Anyhow, now coming back to this, in the entire 3,488 kilometer stretch of the India-China border with the line of actual control, China is going to be the gainer in this in this war ultimately because even though America yesterday had warned China for interfering and providing any assistance to Russia, just today again they gave a statement that they are still scared and concerned that China might still come and help help Russia. But now when we have this China, um, uh, Pakistan, Russia become friends, and it is well, it is. I will not say it's very dangerous for us because we are well guarded, we are well safe, we are well protected. And we are well prepared to face any kind of eventuality. In the year 2017 itself, General Bipin Rawat, our CDS at that time had said, India is ready to face a two and a half front war, which was one side China, one side Pakistan, on the other hand, the internal uh, terrorism that's going on in, China, in India. But now, at the same time, yes, what is the matter of concern is, if I look back at the pattern of the world wars, Minakshi, I do not mean sound to intend to be an alarmist over here, but if I look back at the pattern, See what happened in the in the first uh, the first first two wars. Let's take from 28 June okay. 1914. That time, in, uh, in, in, in there was an assassination of the Austria-Hungary Empire mm. the heir in in, in, uh, by, by, in in Bosnia by the Serbian mm. nationalists, and that is when Austria-Hungary launched an attack on uh, on uh, on Serbia after a month, and slowly and gradually other countries stepped in. America stepped in in 1917 when 16, 17, 18 March. When the Germans sank three American ships, that's the time America was compelled to come into the World War after so many years. Mm -hmm. But in the pattern of the Second World War, that time again. Okay, point taken, point taken. Now, I thank all the experts who joined us and gave us a better understanding of what's happening there on ground in Ukraine.